Okay, we're back on theCUBE, day three, eight hours of coverage every day. We're here Sunday setting up. I actually flew out Monday night to go to San Francisco for the HBase conference, then flew back this morning, Dave Vellante. We're everywhere, wherever the stories are, we want to cover them, whether it's the uh, tech alpha geeks in San Francisco talking about HBase or EMC, we're all talking about storage, big data, cloud, or talking provisioning with uh, Puppet. Guys, welcome, Nigel Hurston from Puppet. And uh, Nick Weaver from EMC. Guys, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Uh, so tell us about what's going on with Puppet and the deal with EMC because you got, a, you got an apps, DevOps-like company playing in the, the elite and uh, cutting bleeding edge cloud and EMC bare metal provisioning. So tell us the deal, how you got here, and then we'll have fun have, kicking the conversation around. So we just announced today that we've got Razor, which is our next generation provisioning solution built by our good friends at EMC. And we build it on top of some of the core technologies we have in the Puppet ecosystem. We've got automated inventory system, we've got automated node discovery, and we built this awesomely flexible system that lets you dynamically provision bare metal. And honestly, treat it with the same sort of agility that you have with the cloud. And I'll let Nick talk more about how the, how the project was developed. I mean, it came out of the fact that we were experimenting with, with bare metal delivery, delivering inside EMC, and we kind of looked at a lot of different tools that were out there and we, we realized that not many of them actually partnered well if you're also trying to do DevOps after the bare metals provision, right? And there's a real kind of big gap and disconnect between the two. And so we said, you know, if we decided to do some ourselves, what would be the hit list? Like, what would be the top things and how would you integrate it? And out of that, we decided to just give it a shot and, and work with it. And so we, uh, we kind of packed up our little list of dreams, traveled out to see Nigel and the guys and said, hey, what do you guys think about this? And, and the awesome thing about it was they basically came to us with this prototype and went, what do you think about this? And this is the software we would have built if we'd spent time working on it. So we just knew there was this really awesome synergy really quickly. That's nice, that's great. Michael. Did you flew by to Portland? Yes, I spent, I, spent a, I spent like five weeks, I think, four or five weeks out there in the last couple months, yeah. Nice, yeah. great area up there. So these guys came to you with software, great collaboration. You guys, hey, no problem, we can do this, sure. and just made it happen? Yep. How long ago was that? So I think the, the first time we actually kind of got a, you know, permission to, to continue was about mid-January. I think our first trip was in February. So between about end of February till now, it was about the total length of the project. That's like lightning for a big company like EMC, right? I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, it was very agile. We had a lot of help though. So we came in, we would come in with, with code and with designs and we'd bounce it off these guys. And they would, you know, because they've got a great library of software. We were using their Factor product, which does the inventory. Um, we got M Collective, which is their distributed control framework built in. So they had a lot of great repos and knowledge and understanding, so we kept bouncing things off them and they kind of helped hone us and figure, help us figure out problems and short circuit issues. And so it was a great collaboration. They, a lot of design and influence from Puppet and then uh, a lot of just coding and work from EMC. I think we really saw the benefits of having a really robust platform and this laser focus on just solving one problem really, really exactly. well. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, and I think you know, EMC's got some work on, uh, they've done with Pivotal, just on the acquisition side, on Absolutely, the big data yeah, side. Yeah. So, you know, from a coolness relevance factor, you know, it's really high. You guys, got, you obviously have better with, with Ops, Opsco with Chef, so you guys are really doing well in the marketplace. This, this, is, this is the business model of the future for cloud, right? right. This is cloud. Uh, the question is, on the hardware side, right, bare metal, um, what's the environment look like with this solution? Is it just EMC solutions? Is it other no. servers? In fact, part of our, that list of dreams, one of the big line items was, we should build something that can handle you know, VMware virtualization, KMVM virtualization, any kind of physical hardware, any kind of blade. Why corner ourselves with one product? Yeah. It should be able to discover inventory and understand and, and bring relevant metadata to make you make decisions with on anything. And that's why you know, Puppet Labs Factor was so important to us, is it, that's what it does, is it's able to inventory and extract all this great information, facts, out of a system, that's why we use that is because we want to make it so we can have, so if EMC internally makes a choice on a different kind of platform to launch on, we're not restricted by choices we made earlier. So Nigel, when you, when you talk to other vendors like Dell, I mean Dell's very active, obviously in OpenStack and a bunch of other initiatives in the community, but also they're trying to make their commodity hardware still be commodity hardware, but yet have some flexibility to integrate into these hyperscale environments like DevOps, Hadoop, right. and really cutting edge work where you can just stack, rack, and then you know, expand and scale out. Right. So obviously that's great. You know, with Hadoop you can load a ton of right, stuff yeah, on, exactly. on, on, on one server, forget right. about the old, but this is the new model. So commodity hardware is changing, that, that definition. It's still kind of commodity hardware, but it's got a lot more software in it. So the question sure. I have for you guys is, tell us your vision around how you see 
this provisioning, configuration management, automation side of the business that's been an app side, integrating in with some of the infrastructure hardware guys. Is it going to be running to APIs? Is it going to be, you know, how, does the, how do you balance that, that uh, arms race, if you will? Sure. Who, who, goes, who goes first? Is it, is, it driven by, is it driven by the app guys? Are the hardware guys playing catch up? I think honestly, Pete, sysadmins and app guys are going to pick the software that works for them. And yeah, so I think that's why it was so important. This is vendor agnostic, it'll work with yes. everything. And it's Apache licensed. There's people are free to innovate in an open source manner with their proprietary plugins. This space is as open as it can possibly be. And I think ultimately that's the software that wins. Talk about the openness because uh, obviously we're a big fan of open source. Uh, explain to the folks out there who might not have a lot of uh, depth in open source. When you put a project out in the open that could have agendas, Talk about what makes a project successful when it's in the open from the beginning. I think what and makes it successful is fair governance. When people have an itch to scratch and they write code for it, that you're fair about accepting that code, that you're not blocking it because of commercial interests, but you're letting innovation proceed at its own pace. Is that balancing the commits, the committers? Balancing that kind of committee of uh, commit bits what is that for managing the, the commit code, right, or right. is it? I think honestly you judge on code quality and functionality. Yeah, and if you're, if you're genuine okay. about that, Every success will come. Versus mailing it in with Absolutely. crappy code. No one wants that. It's meritocracy at this point, right? I mean, Absolutely. it's like, you know, good code speaks for itself, right? Yep. So, I mean, from EMC's standpoint, we, we went to Puppet Labs and said, look, we want to open source this because we realized that the best partner we could have in the DevOps community was Puppet, and we wanted to adopt their model and the way they approach the community and the way they approach success, right? And so that partnership was, we went to them and said, look, how do you guys deliver functionality? How do you guys do open source? And, and they end up, coming back to us and say, listen, we do Apache license, we open up the community, we accept fun functionality, we accept features, and so EMC's made this investment, but the EMC's going to reap the benefits also. So as people add functionality and extend yeah, and this and code. And that's the open source way, and that's yeah, like. Yeah, so we'll that's, benefit from it strongly. Yeah, well yeah. you guys, first of all, good citizen to doing yes. that work. Yeah. That's job one. Two, you're going to get the halo effect from the pull. Absolutely. Off, and drafting off that success. Um, the question, Nick, I have for you now is, um, what were some of the challenges and complexities that you were looking to overcome with this partnership? When you started, you know, kind of kicking the tires and, hey, I want to go out and talk to Puppet. Um, what were some of the complexities you guys were trying to solve? I'd say it's really down to three things. One is, I already mentioned, is a big air gap, right? So everybody looks at bare metal, as this single task, it's, it's, it's a long operational cycle, it's painful to do. Um, it's kind of like, if you're an application guy or a system administrator guy, sometimes it's one of those things where it goes into a black hole, right? You say, hey, I need you to redo this server, I need 10 more servers, it goes off in a black hole, nobody knows what happens to it, then all of a sudden, two weeks later, you get your servers, right? And then the second piece we had was, there was this real big disconnect with tools that do provisioning, and then the upper level stack control. Right? So Puppet has the ability to deploy, uh, with our demos, vSphere, right, coming out right now, but also OpenStack, Apache, Hadoop, all these great platforms on top, but it has no visibility down into the bare metal into the actual things underneath that, right? So the issue becomes, if there's some way we can actually harvest the information at bare metal and share that while provisioning with the upper level configuration, you can make some really cool decisions, right? So you can take finite hardware of different sizes and shapes, and Puppet can take it and go, okay, this is how I want to slice it up into a proper stack, right? You know, proxy servers are a little smaller than the big object servers, and even like, take mapping and do all kinds of cool stuff with these very complex application stuff that can inherit finite resources. How, so what's the next step in the evolution of this project? Is it going to be an open source project? Is it going to be managed by Puppet? Is it going to be, how well, are you guys well, looking at this? We're one. combining governance on the Razor project and it's going to continue to be open source. We are really strong believers the fact that the components of the platform for your infrastructure really have to be open source. There's Absolutely. lots of scope for pe people to have commercial differentiators on top, but really the plumbing itself needs to be open so source. So this is all going to be headlined under Razor yep. as the project. Okay, great. EMC actually took the code and gave it over to Puppet Labs to go underneath their license, so it's properly underneath all the rest of the Puppet Okay, cool. Source. So you guys kind of be the gatekeeper, that's cool. So uh, Nigel, give us a quick update on what's going on at Puppet with the company, uh, some recent status updates. You guys were on VMworld, we had you on. Sure. Uh, the company talking about um, what's going on in your product and, and company. Sure, so we've been continuing to release Puppet Enterprise, which is our commercial version, where we take the well, well tried, well tested OpenStack components, uh, open source components, build out the stack and provide a bunch of commercial differentiators on there. We've got some great GUIs around orchestration, live management, which allows you to visually browse all of the resources on your, on your nodes, and then clone them across machines. So people who don't even have any idea how to write manifests, how to write any code, can really leverage the power of the platform. Awesome. Well, congratulations, Nick. What's next for you guys? You're going to continue this relationship, obviously, with EMC. Yep. Um, we, we have, does it mean we, you're going to get an apartment in uh, Portland or travel <laughs> out there? They have good beer in Portland. They keep offering you know that. these. Like, they say I can office out of there if I wanted to. 
but uh, the best beer is in the, up in Portland. You know good that. Good coffee too, yeah. actually. Coffee, I, I've beer. I've been impressed by the coffee yeah. as well. The, uh, <laughs> That's why everyone's so chilled out up there. Exactly. <laughs> they drink a lot, then they have coffee in the and morning. And the food carts. I'm, I'm a yeah. huge fan of the food carts, actually. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of innovation in Portland. Alex Williams, our contributor, is up there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Clint Finley, uh, a writer for us, was up there as well. Yeah. So good stuff. So the next thing, I mean, so we still have a lot of stuff we wanted to get into the code. We haven't finished yet. So look for EMC to add some more features and more value. Yeah. Uh, and, I don't want to say too much ahead of time, but we have a lot of ambition with the code, all the going to the community, all the benefiting everybody, but this is just the tip of the spear for us. All right, guys, thanks so much. Uh, we're going to be right back to uh, wrap up EMC World, uh, day three. We have waiting for Scott McNeely to come on the cube, and uh, that'll be a fun interview for Dave and I, us old school dudes. Uh, we'll have a good wrap with Scott McNeely to talk about the Sundays and Unix. Um, so we'll be right back after this break. <laughs>